Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, let's explore how to secure model context protocol. Let's try to understand the problem first. So MCP, model context protocol, has become a common layer for integrating large language model agents into modern infrastructure. And these agents are very powerful. They can spin up the infrastructure for you. They can create Kubernetes clusters. They can write code for you. They can access your internal documentation, third-party applications, whatnot. Now, the major problem here is that most organizations today rely on static credentials to make this work. It can be SSH keys stored on the disk. It can be cube configs with long lifetimes or AWS IAM keys hard-coded in the pipelines. Now, imagine if one of these secrets leaks, the attacker immediately gains full access to the underlying system. In the case of AI agents, this risk is even higher because these agents, as I told you, they run autonomously and they run with broad privileges. Now, how do we solve this problem? The solution should not be to control what MCP agents can do, but to control how they get the access. Now, this is what I believe. The right security model relies on five important principles. Number one, eliminate the static credentials. Number two, enforce least privilege access, which is very, very important. Number three, issue short-lived identities that expire automatically. Number four, log every action for traceability. And finally, apply strict access controls at the identity layer. Now, this is what we traditionally do for our software applications or in the traditional software development lifecycle. Now, it is important to apply the same concepts to model context protocol as well. This is where Teleport comes into picture, which is also our sponsor for today's video. And if you haven't worked with Teleport in the past, let me tell you, Teleport replaces static credentials with short-lived certificates that are automatically issued and rotated. Now, these certificates can be tied to user or machine identities. Teleport can secure SSH, Kubernetes, database, internal applications, and even cloud services like AWS. We can use Teleport to apply the same concept to MCP as well. With Teleport, an MCP agent is treated as a first class identity. So what Teleport does here, it allows teams to enforce granular permissions, audit every action and eliminate static credentials entirely while dealing with model context protocol. But now the big question is, where do you actually use Teleport? So you can use Teleport as part of your daily use cases. Wherever you're using model context protocol today, you can actually use Teleport there. It can be replacing your SSH keys and cube configs with short-lived access certificates. This eliminates key sprawl and simplifies access control while you're dealing with Kubernetes clusters. Another major use case is while securing or communicating with AWS. Instead of using long-lived IAM keys, using Teleport, you can use AWS STS credentials, which are short-lived. I personally like the use case of using Teleport with CI-CD pipelines. So when you are dealing with machine identities, typically with the CI-CD pipelines, you can use Teleport and you can actually create these identities so that they are fully auditable. You can go back, see using which user or using which identity you have actually performed actions through your CI-CD pipelines. In the demonstration, I will show you how to set up a Teleport cluster, how to use Teleport, how to add your node to the Teleport cluster, how to set up MCP servers, how to have your Teleport service running, and even I'll show you how to use it with a GitHub MCP server. So we'll try to understand the access control, and we'll also try to understand auditing point of view using GitHub MCP server and Teleport. So for the purpose of demo, I'll use my existing Teleport account. You can also create one using the link in the description. It's completely free. 
or you can also self host teleport using the steps provided in their github repository i'll share all the links in the description so try to go through them now i'll log into my existing teleport account the best part here is that if you are a beginner teleport provides you with a cluster you can use that cluster and you can add one of your virtual machines as a node in the teleport cluster i'm using aws ec2 instance and i have already connected that as a node to the cluster it's very simple you can head to the documentation or otherwise click on enroll new resources search for ubuntu because in my case i'm using ubuntu instance click on this skip adding labels for the first time you will find a script just copy the script and run it on your ec2 instance teleport automatically detects the instance and then your instance is added as a node to the cluster now once you do that just head back to all resources section and just like mine you will find your ec2 instance here now you can connect to the node using the user in my case i'll connect through the ubuntu user it's that simple now on top of this node you can run the teleport service as well as mcp servers so this is what we are doing right we will head to the mcp server section so this is the exact thing that we are implementing so on the teleport node we will run the teleport service and mcp server using our mcp client in our case we will use windsurf and through tsh that i have on my local machine i'll connect to the teleport service and then connect to mcp this where my end to end flow is secure and using the managed identities as well or using short lived credentials as well let's see that so on this i have to run the teleport service i'll go back to the documentation in the documentation you can follow getting started with mcp just install a uh, tctl and a uh, tsh i already have a uh, tsh running then you can create a new teleport service once you run this command a token is created and the token is stored in the temp file then you can configure the etc teleport.yaml file it is a key one so in the etc teleport.yaml because we are planning to implement a uh, security for mcp we can just add our mcp server details here once you add these details just restart the teleport service so that your changes are reflected every time you make changes to the mcp whether it is adding new mcp server or removing mcp server make sure you restart the teleport service it's straight forward everything is in the documentation once you do this you are left with one final step because we have added the teleport node we are running teleport service on top of it now let's head to my local where i have windsurf as mcp client i have created couple of users so if we just go to zero trust access and users so i have few users here uh, so this is the admin user which has access to mcp and it has all the access so we'll first try with this user and see if we can access the mcp server that we are running and then using other user let's say my user here which does not have access to mcp or it does not even access have any privileged access so we'll also try with this user and see if teleport can block access to mcp server to the my user let's try it out so on my local machine i'll just head to item so on my local terminal i have a tsh installed i'll first log in through viramala.abhishek user which is the admin user so tsh login proxy this is my uh, teleport server details uh, and then this is the user 
perfect so i have logged into this user now on vim surf i'll quickly show you how to add the mcp server details so you can just run a uh, tsh mcp config hyphen hyphen all and everything that you added to hc teleport as part of your teleport service so that is converted and mcp details are shared to you in the json format which you can just copy and add it to your mcp client in my case windsor open the uh, mcp config file and edit so this is a json file i just pasted it here and i have all the three mcp servers running so you can see i have dev everything i have github mcp server and i also have the demo mcp server perfect now let's test it with the admin user i've signed in with it so i'll just run this get list of github repositories right okay so get the list of github repositories let's see if it is talking to the mcp server perfect mcp tool teleport mcp server get me and it started getting all the github repository details so these are the top repositories that i have and overall i have more than 50 repositories it also provides the information uh, everything that's needed uh, the number of stars what exactly is the repository if required i can also create new repositories because i have complete access to the mcp server using this user now this time let's test it with the other user which does not have access so we did not define the mcp access or we did not grant the mcp access to my user uh, in the zero trust access section so let me switch to that user tsh login hyphen hyphen user my user okay and i'll just do tsh mcp ls and you should already see you don't have access to any tools on the mcp server so even you get a warning here but still let's go back to mcp client let's restart the mcp client it is always a good practice quit i'll restart windsurf okay now i'll just take a complete new tab uh, on the windsurf cascade right let's try the same thing let's the github repos i'll help you get the github repos it tried to find the mcp server but it says i don't have access to the mcp configuration file and do you want me to run the github cli command so this way we can block access to users we can define everything in the zero trust access we can define short lived credentials and even you know if you go to zero trust access not only about uh, granting access but you can also define proper rbac for example uh, in the user section i can provide my admin user with auditor access i can provide my admin user with editor access and to the other users i can just grant the read access but specifically for mcp there is a design role access mcp so you can also define the rbac using this access mcp role now the other interesting thing when it comes to auditing i'm sure every company today wants to look at the audit details so you can see here uh, my user try to access mcp this is the mcp server and you are provided with clear timestamp uh, so this is the timestamp when user try to access and this is the specific cluster and you can see this audit logs uh, of course if you have uh, the required access so you cannot see it with every user uh, in my case i have only granted auditor access to viramala.abhishek so only if i log into my teleport cluster through this user i can see the detailed audit logs and i can investigate any misuse of the mcp or maybe i can go back and perform the postmortem perfect so this is how you can implement 
zero trust access and auditing to your MCP servers using Teleport. I would highly recommend you to go through that documentation and explore other use cases of Teleport. Now, I don't have to tell you how important is securing MCP going to be in the future. Every company today wants to run their AI agents, wants to configure their own MCP servers. It can be internal or external. So it is very important to secure the MCP servers with right access control and also proper auditing. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section and make sure to go through the links in the description and create an account with Teleport today. See you all in the next video. Take care. Bye everyone.